What up guys, Ali here and welcome to Ali Talks Music. Add me on Instagram at Ali Talks Music as well. And don't forget to subscribe and hit the notification bell. Now let's get into the video. La Chat considered rap royalty of Memphis, Tennessee was quite a dominant act in the early 2000s with well-known features like Project Pat's Chicken Head, Chicken Head, Ball Head, Stand Away, Ain't Got No Hair in Bag, Three Six Mafia's Baby Mama, And two way free. If you like classic hardcore hip hop, you have probably heard of her. She's one of the few female rappers whose music has constantly revolved around hardcore gangster rap themes. She was born Chastity Daniels on March 21st, 1978, as the only girl with three very protective brothers. When talking about what her hometown was like, she stated the following Like it's now, hardcore, street, thuggish. We get money down there though, she went on to say. It's a fine city, you gotta be from there though to survive. Which accurately sums up her difficult childhood and financial struggles. She was far older in her mind than her physical age and she matured very quickly, partly due to 1989. Up until that year, La Chat had a complete and happy family. She was the princess of a well-guarded castle and had the typical daddy-daughter relationship with her father. Unfortunately, he was diagnosed with cancer and passed on later that year. To add salt to the wound, that same year her oldest brother was murdered at the age of 21. She was only 11 at the time and naturally did not fully understand what was happening. La Chad's mother had the worst of it. Having lost both her husband and eldest son in the same year proved to be too difficult for her to handle and she had a full nervous breakdown. She ended up being retired early from her job as a sergeant in a correctional facility. Though her son's killers did end up getting caught, the murderer was only charged with manslaughter despite her son not even having a gun at the time and the trial was incredibly hard on her. Many people stood up at the trial to testify that her son had been a dangerous man and she could not recognize reconcile this image with that of her beloved first born. When La Chat was interviewed, she was asked to recount the story of the trial to which she responded that she had been too young to attend but that it had hurt and confused her mother deeply. She was like, what? Who's y'all talking about? Who's this guy? Cause they made him out to be some kind of mobster. You know, like I'm the mother. I know we don't really know how our kids is but she ended up finding out that day when she went into court. It hurt a lot but it did give us some understanding. You know, she came back and told us. I was younger. I didn't understand till I got older. Around this time, she had already decided that she was a rapper. In third grade, two years before the loss of her father and brother, she had written a poem about Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. during Black History Month. The poem was for an assignment and her peers mistakenly identified it as a rap when she recited it. She liked this and thereafter considered herself a rapper. In 7th grade, she wrote a rap entitled Peace in the Middle East. This time it was mistakenly identified as a poem by her principal who thought the piece was so good that he recited it over the intercom. When recounting the incident, she said the following. I was pressing them up and passing them out and letting people read them, giving them to teachers and lots of different people. So from that point on, I thought I was a rapper. At the age of 13 or 14, she was hanging out in the streets a lot. It was there that she met her child's father, though they would not have their child together until La Chad was 19 and he was 21. He had a strong influence over her and eventually she reformed into a good girl turned bad chick. She was skipping school, regularly, and when her mother found out, she withdrew her from school entirely. La Chad ended up choosing the streets and was married off to her future baby daddy at the tender age of 16. In one of her interviews, she went on to talk about why her mother did this to her and said the following. She was like, I'm gonna give him to you cause he was like 18. Cause he turned 18 and I was 16 and she was like, I'm gonna get you out of my custody. You don't wanna go to school. You wanna be grown. You wanna do what you wanna do. Come on, I'll take y'all down there. Y'all get married. I'ma give him to you. And then I got married at 16. Their marriage lasted five years. They went on to have their son three years after they were married. But La Chad's partner messed up time and time again. Eventually, Chad got fed up 
and opted out of the relationship at age 21. The two went their separate ways and are on very good terms nowadays because they want to be there for their kid. In the ninth grade before she dropped out of school, Lachat performed in her high school talent shows. It was there that she was discovered by Juicy J. This was when 3-6 Mafia was still underground. After seeing her talent, Juicy J called her up and asked her to rap. At the time, she was in the room with her mother and asked if he could call her back. He responded by saying, Aw oh man, you can't rap? And he hung up the phone. At that moment, Lachat was convinced that she had just blown her chance. Luckily, he called again and this time, she went to the end of her driveway and performed for him. He was impressed. And not before long, she was doing features with other artists. Initially, Lachat could not perform much at home and would hang out with Juicy J at her friend's place and his crude recording equipment. She would rap to as many beats as she could while Juicy J recorded. One of her first proper appearances was alongside Crunchy Black and Juicy J in their rap, Body Full of Bullet Holes, in Juicy's 95 Greatest Hits tape at the age of 17. She also got involved in the 3-6 Mafia crew before they got their name and did a few songs with them before they got signed to Relativity Records. At this time, she was still in the streets with her then-husband and was not taking rap that seriously. And this was despite Juicy J calling her up often and talking to her about music. Because of this, she missed her opportunity to sign with 3-6 Mafia and they ended up signing to Relativity Records with Gangsta Boo as the only female of the group. That could have been her. She realized how much she had blown her chance when she saw them on TV without her. Luckily, they did not entirely forget about her and she earned herself a stellar verse on the title track from 3-6 Mafia's debut album, Mystic Styles. She continued to rap and remain visible on the street to sell her name to the public. And when Hypnotized Minds was set up, Juicy J contacted her again and brought her into the roster. This era was when Lachat was best known. She made several appearances with other artists including Last Alternative with Two-Face and Gangsta Forever with Play A Fly, both of which appeared on Tommy Wright's On The Run album. She also performed with 10 Wanted Men and Gangsta Boo. However, it was the 3-6 Mafia crew that was her musical family. It was a feature on their song Touch With It from their album When The Smoke Clears, 6661, that she's most well known for and is listed as her most listened to song on Spotify. Once signed to Hypnotized Minds, Lachat dropped her debut album Murder She Spoke around 2001. The album didn't do incredibly well sales-wise as it peaked at number 78 on the US Billboard 200. The biggest hits from the album were the bouncy and popular Don't Sing It You Ain't Mad Izzya and a crumb to a brick. At the time, La Chat was a bubbling under artist. And because of the many relationships she built over the years, she formed a feature on Project Pat's hit, Chicken Head, which blew up commercially and on the charts, eventually earning platinum record status. La Chat's own album earned a respectable 250,000 copies worldwide. Around this time, she also starred in the film, Choices. 3-6 Mafia produced all of her music for the film. See Eddie, I should let you live. But I got a heart. So kill it. As well as being executive producers. The corresponding album of the same title released by 3-6 Mafia featured several appearances by Lachat, including the well-known two-way freak. It was her first opportunity to act and she really enjoyed it. When asked about the experience, she said the following. I never had a clue that I would be acting and everyone would love the role because really, I was being me. While we were filming it, the room would be quiet. But when I started acting, everyone would get to laugh. I was like, what's so funny? It was so fun. Despite the promising start of her debut album and all the work she did with other artists under hypnotized minds, Lachat found out that she was not earning royalties for her work. This naturally upset her as she had been working with the group and performing with them for about six years. Because Lachat had so much history with 3-6 Mafia, she approached the group about the topic in a friendly way, but they did not listen to her and nothing came of it. She eventually left the label, but harbors no resentment towards the performers themselves. 
In one of her interviews, she said the following, I had to get my attorneys involved and the situation was going on so long that I just asked to be released. I never saw a royalty check from hypnotized minds after putting in all that work that y'all have heard me do. But I thank them. They're the ones that gave me the big break to get in the industry. So from that point on, I've just been doing what I do. LaChad did not let her exit from hypnotized minds stop her trajectory. She has been steadily releasing albums for about 20 years following her departure from the label. Around 2004, she dropped her next album called Ultimate Revenge. The album didn't make it to the Billboard 200, but made it to number 92 on the US Billboard R&B Hip Hop Albums chart. This would be her last album to hit the charts. Barely four months later, she dropped another album with a different label. The album was called Dramatize, and the new label was Rap Hustlers. This album was a massive flop and failed to make an impact on any charts. This time she tried to take a bit of a break before releasing her fourth album two years later under a new label Inevitable Records titled Bad Influence. Her fifth album was called The Hood Homegirl The Album and was released around 2008 under a new label. At this point, it seemed like all of her label situations were not working out for her and she took a seven year break after these two releases. In this time, her notable achievements were winning Female Rap Artist of the Year around 2010 and partnering with her longtime friend Gangsta Boo on a project titled Witch around 2004, which was a collaborative effort between the two artists and resulted in an EP consisting of about 11 tracks. The most popular track was by far on that, followed thereafter by Till the Day. Her other main focus around 2014 was her brother. He slipped breaking his neck and spine and unfortunately he was paralyzed from the neck down. He was in a nursing home for a while, but LaChad found the conditions depressing and morgue-like and refused to allow him to stay there. She got herself certified to take care of him, brought him home and started the movement hashtag I am strong. She sold t-shirts with the logo and all proceeds went to taking care of him. Now that's a good sister. Around 2015, LaChad released Murder She Spoke 2 which was received well by the fans but again failed to make an impact on the charts. Around 2018, Cardi B released her debut album, Invasion of Privacy. The album sampled La Chat and Project Pat's infamous success Chicken Head for the album's cut, Bicken Head. La Chat took offense to this as they were not credited on the tracks and felt like Cardi B was biting rather than showing them respect. In response, she released a scathing freestyle over 36 Mafia's Who Run It beat and took multiple shots. <laughs> I did see she thanked everybody except me. I was like, damn, come on now, we What are we doing? We got thank you Project Pat, thank you Juicy J, thank you DJ Paul. Like another mother wasn't on it. So I just felt like it is what it is. That's how it go. A lot of women that way. But if it was me and I was her, I would have been like, shout out Cardi B. It looks like the chat was ready for some smoke. LaChat released her latest album around 2019 and called it Drama Queen Who Wants Smoke. The album was released under Dime a Dozen Entertainment and again failed to hit the charts. In conclusion, LaChat's debut album didn't do major numbers. In fact, as numbers go, the majority of her albums underperformed. LaChat is still actively releasing music, performing and doing interviews. She remains a single mother to her only son. She's verified on IG at LaChat underscore IG and on Twitter as at the real LaChat. As mentioned earlier, she is still performing and still performs with Gangsta Boo from time to time. And on November 19th, she's gonna be performing as a guest in Missouri alongside Juicy J. She has also recently featured on Creep Tip by Ski Mask Yama Main and Nobody by DJ Boss Chick. Presently, she's running a TikTok challenge based on her 2001 Murder She Spoke hit, Slob On My Cat, as well as offering to review and post her followers' music on her Instagram stories. La Chat gets about 25,000 monthly listeners on Spotify, and her most popular songs on the platform are Touched With It, Don't Sang It, On That, A Crumb To A Brick, and You Ain't Mad Is Ya. Y'all got me lead. Thanks, Brian, for buying another bass. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Ooh, the most thing you. Thanks, big legacy. I got you. Big homie. Cloud game is. Whoa, promise I ain't gonna miss a beat on this bitch.
that's it for me it's your boy ali what happened to the chat in your opinion let me know down below if you have a video request be sure to let me know as well you what happened to video dropping next week also add me on instagram at ali talks music till next time adios